Straw Hut Media. Thanks for joining us on Both Sides Now and Beyond. Dive into the unseen realms with spiritual mediums James Van Prague and Kelly White as we redefine perspectives on life, death, and human experiences. Yay! Uh, yay! I'm thinking we got to do an opening, so I have an idea of a new opening. I'll tell you later. Oh, <laughs> for the new year. <laughs> you want to hear something funny? When I was in Chicago, I went to 444 Michigan Avenue, and it was my favorite place. It was the <laughs> Hocus Shoe Store. <laughs> 444. I loved it. 444 Angels are around. Exactly. You know? And they wear Hocus Shoes. What can I say? They're and very Dean from Chicago. There's love from Chicago. <laughs> And you show my orb picture to James, Tommy Lynn Kramer. I did not, but I will. I have it on my Facebook page, I think. Thanks for reminding me. I will. We've, we've been busy, but we've I will. Busy. We've been really busy. I can't <laughs> I'm show you my desk. It's like piled high. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't show you mine either. <laughs> and I've gone down from 300 to about 100, and, 100 emails, 150. It was a big deal for me. <laughs> a huge deal, James. How did you do it? I just sat here all day and, and filed them and deleted them and answered them. And it's a lot work. of work, isn't it? I don't like it. I don't either. <laughs> I, at regular file, my friend Denavia came over Saturday and we went and we went filing, regular filing files and the whole thing. And Is she good at that? Yeah. That's good. You need somebody that's really good at that. She's, um, what's her, something's in Virgo. Yeah. Jupiter in Virgo. Okay. So she's good at that then. Good. good. Wow. But me and the sun Virgo, so I was like, no, it'd be better if we do it this way. <laughs> I'm just, somebody wants to do it for me? Great. And I used to work filing. That's what my job was for three years in, a, oh. in an office. I used to file all the oh. time. I just and couldn't do it. Art, there's an art to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a, <laughs> oh my gosh. I worked in a basement for eight hours a day in William Morris Agency with no windows whatsoever. It was all cold and steel. And I prepared, um, um, at the contract, took out the staples and prepared for microfiche. Back oh, in, back in the day. 86. Right. Yeah. Oh, gee. Uh, uh, how long I, did you do that? For like three years? Three years, three or four years. And I became, the, the supervisor took me to a medium. And that's why I found out I was going to do what I'm doing. So it had a purpose. It had a purpose. And I always thought it was going to be an agent that's going to follow me, find me in the basement and give me a deal to do a sitcom because I was a sitcom writer. And that didn't happen because I knew it was important that I'd be there. I just knew I but I didn't know what it was. And then it was before a mediumship thing. And then that's my friend Carol. She took me to this medium in Brian Hurst. And that was the rest is history, as they say. The rest is history. And, and you know, oh, Kelly, just as a side note here before we get started, I was just talking to my friend Peggy Fitzsimmons, who's been on our show. I love and we're talking about how things have changed spiritually with a lot of people. And she goes, she goes, I just can't take it. Everybody's doing spiritual work, this and the therapy. And it's like they haven't even done the work and they're putting a shingle out. I'm like, Yeah, that's what we're dealing it, with. It concerns me greatly. There's no responsibility, no integrity. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's so different. People don't have a it's, sense of integrity or responsibility for right. other people. Or, or education with it. Or education. Yeah, which really, you know, that's one of my pet peeves. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a crazy, crazy world. So as you saw today, I'm writing a book about the old world okay. and the new world. But I was <laughs> laughing so hard. By the way, everybody that was watching your show gave you the best tips for that the book. Greatest tips. It was oh, like how God. the world used to be, everybody. Like, you know, pay phones and manners and you know you consistent you know being care conscious of other people and mm -hmm. um, you know tv dinners and asking for directions and now it's a whole different world now so i'm writing a book about that and then what consistency is well i put a dog in there because i'm much full of a dog right here but it's the love of an animal is consistent no matter what it, time. It is. that's wonderful and that's the whole book <laughs> so, it's perfect it right. is perfect and bonnie and Catherine and linda Kelly, what's going on with you? You went to Chicago this weekend. I went to Chicago. My mom, before she passed away, my mother said, create new memories. Just create memories. And so I decided, you know, listen, families have their ups, their downs, their all arounds. And then there's a thing, James, called the myth. And then there's reality. <laughs> and my trip was somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Or survival, I don't know. For survival, and then I had a nice martini or two. So all of that, then it was was a, it was a, I could contain it. But um, yeah, I was in Chicago, and it was first of all, I love Chicago. It's a great, great, great. great. It's my favorite city. Find and I asked for directions, and people were literally giving me directions. This so hot. This uh, I, I I sound judgmental here, but it's true for me. The Midwestern people are kindest. I would agree with that statement. People. Yeah. 
my friend of mine said maybe it's COVID left over. And not only having the, the that, but also the time period of being in your house is shut off. Well, interesting were- thing that you said that, James, because there was a, a doctor, Dr. Amen, said today that if you had had COVID or been exposed to COVID, your anxiety level is up. When your anxiety level is up, you have more inflammation in your body, which creates brain fog. So yes, yes. (laughs) I would agree with that statement. And you know, and these illnesses are still going around too. But brain fog from jabber. How are you feeling, Kelly? Are you feeling any better? I feel so much better. How about you? I feel better, but there's still like a cough thing. But my, you know, my friend was visiting me, and she just was coughing the entire time. So I I can't get away from it. So right, right. I was really glad we spent a lot of time outdoors in Chicago, even though it was, you know, it was cold. But you know, we had coats and we walked up and down Michigan Avenue. And I wasn't worried about getting anything. I was very conscious of where I was. Yeah. You know, right. so anyway, Death, wow. Yes, but definitely COVID plays a role. I've had brain fog and it's true. And memory loss. That's interesting, Cindy. Yeah, I understand that. I, I, I my memory's a little weird too. It's really strange. Well, that did well, a number on us. It, it did yeah. a number on us. Let's think about today. It's like, I, and I still have some remnants of that. It's yeah. like, this really did a real number and it was, Definitely engineered in a lab because, like, this is not natural. Oh, it's this just was so not natural. No. <laughs> you, the way it took us both down, no, it was not natural. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, no. no. <laughs> well, I, I'm hoping that some of the brain fog will start to dissipate when we talk, when I talk about what's going to happen, you know, now. But one good thing, James, that is happening astrologically is that in two days, Neptune, the dreamy planet that kind of puts yep. us all, you know, like, just kind of unconscious bit. And it rules, uh, it, rules, it rules Pisces, right, Kelly? It rules, and it's in Pisces. It it's rules Pisces. Pisces, and it is in Vedic astrology. It is in Pisces, and it's going direct in two days. It has been retrograde for months, just for the record, for months. So that's a really good thing when it goes direct on December yeah, 6th. Yeah, that's the spaciness that everybody's feeling, right? Yes. And so when it goes direct, <laughs> it's going to boost our like compassion and our spiritual connection. Right, right. And our, it will make us a little more practical in things, you know? So it's actually a, a little thing. more empathetic. Oh, please, God. Yes. Yes. I think, and it's the timing couldn't be better because we really need that now, you know? Yeah. Especially now we're going to the holidays and we, as a show oh. is surviving the holidays yes. family because it's a major, I think throughout the whole year, this is the one time in the year that it really, and we have all the other holidays, but I think Christmas time or Hanukkah, when it, it's a, it's oh. a, it's a this, big family this is gathering, it. right? This is it. This it pushes is it. a lot of buttons that we come back to work with our families. That's our number one, you know, learning. Our, our teachers are our families. <laughs> yes. Yep. And it's going to push all our buttons. It just will. <laughs> Even if we're saints out there. But, um, you know, and then James, you and I, would, another good thing I did want to talk about too, astrologically, we have another good thing. And that is that, um, in regard to relationships, Venus, the planet of love and relationships and finances and business partners and things like that, uh, it is just transited into Libra and Libra is its own house. That's partner, the couples. That's- partners. So, you know, in some ways, even though the astrology will be challenging to say the least, at least there are a couple of good things. And one of them is Neptune direct. And the other one is Venus and Libra. Did I tell so, you I met somebody over the weekend? So you did. You called me in Chicago and you told me. So I tell us. You. you did. Do, go ahead. Spill. It was a great story. I was just walking Pearl down the beach. And Pearl's mm-hmm. always, you know, she opens the doors for many things. <laughs> She's good. And she was, yeah. It was, um, yeah. I'm not going to go into details, but it, yeah, this person was hanging out. This guy was hanging out and it was um setting up a store. And we just, I was across the street. It was across, we just happened to look at each other that time. It's like. And there was something going on there, a connection of some kind. See, that's Venus in and, Libra. And he's a surf instructor, so I'll be taking surfing lessons. <laughs> I think it's perfect. I think, <laughs> make memories, James. I'll kill myself. It'll just be great. <laughs> I think you should do it. But it was, I think I never asked, it was good to get out and, and have that experience. So, oh, and, I think and, it's great. And his name was? What was his name? Brian. Oh, that's right. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So if some people that don't know, you're... That was my former um, husband. husband for 23 yeah. years named Brian. That's right. <laughs> and Margaret, Margaret says, spill the tea, James. Spill the tea. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Which is perfect. As um, you get older, you don't really care. You just. No, you, you don't. You don't. It, it just comes out. 
Which so is what else is down the, the, the So one two. of the things that's that's a big one is Neptune's going to go direct. That's fantastic. But also on December 6th, we have a thing called Sati Sati. And Sati Sati is when the Saturn and the moon are conjunct. And this year, it happened three times. It's conjunct in the United States chart. So what does that mean? The United States, James, could be looking at going into war. I mean, we've talked, you and I have talked yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, for sure. <laughs> and it's a, it means a karmic reckoning and it brings a lot of pressure pressure in and didn't you weren't you telling me about a friend of yours that was talking about Saudi Sati well yeah and I mean he was talking to me he is an astrologer who I also know very well and she's a pretty good astrologer isn't it professionally but um she said to him and he told me he said well you know he talked to Alexi and she said that now is the time she might be watching the show that uh it's it's karmic it's it's like yeah. all those connections of people the connection they're all coming to a karmic beginning or end yeah. and the, those experiences they're either going to rise up to the vibration or not and you might be in a very different vibration than they are and you you they might do something that upsets you but you can't get into that drama of it because they're releasing an old karma well and that's so, so perfect that you're saying that because that's really when we're talking about our show tonight it really is your buttons are going to get pushed we have things families we have people with loss and grief and just dysfunctional families and some people have a triple whammy of that and it's what you're saying it really is a time for everybody if you look at your uh, if you look how far you've come you know you don't if you have a, an awareness you don't have to go down the rabbit hole with it it's true and, and and i think kelly that um people should look at this time with their families if you will um that it's time to look at the family relationships and and don't be pulled into but stop back have that objectivity and see what you're learning from each individual and don't judge them and just see where they're at in that scale of what you want to engage in or help or teach or, or step back and let them just be. You can't change people. You just can't change them. No, I tried. I tried. I tried. I know. I did for years. As I, I yes. gave it up. So you can't force people to go. You can't force people. People are going to be on their journeys. And something you taught me many years ago, they're limited. <laughs> they're, they're, on, limited. they're on the level that they're at, and that's all they're going to see. And if they want to see differently, then they will. But guess what? A lot of people don't want to do the work. A lot of people just want to just be. Right, they are in that little playpen of theirs, and well, uh, so many that. of them are that are they're just unconscious, and they see an old family pattern, and then they'll repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. Yeah, and, and you know, I go keep on going every single day. It comes back to me, even today with Pearl. I was playing in the garden with her, uh, and it was like someone mentioned. Oh, my my in my roommate Eric talked about people that were unconscious. I said, yeah, and it keeps on coming back to me. Even my the night when I was doing readings, people. That whole thing came back about people are unconscious. It's the what the spirit all says it's the walking dead. It's a walking sleepwalker. Everybody's sleepwalking. Everybody's sleepwalking. Like oh my five percent are awake. I mean Yeah. Yeah. It's tr it's true. That's why that it's whole bad. woke thing is hysterical to me because it's just the opposite. They're not woke. It's just the opposite. <laughs> that is so so true. Oh, you know what? You had some good ideas. You sent an email out, and I just wanted to, yeah. you know, talk a little bit about your what you talked about for surviving the holidays. For yeah. surviving the holidays, and if you haven't seen this email that James sent out, you should be on his email list. This was a really good one. I mean, you talked about, you know, like manage your expectations, right? Exactly right. Manage your expectations. Don't don't put your own expectations on others because right. they are who they are, and that's all they are. So you, if you try this holiday to help somebody or change somebody's point of view in your family or an argument comes up, just stop. Don't force them because you'll get more upset. And your expectations, one of the biggest lessons I learned this lifetime was unrealistic expectations. You know, and Kelly, you helped me with that because I wish I I'd help myself. <laughs> with people like give, give, give. Yeah, and they yeah. expect something back. It's like, no, they don't know any better. They don't give back because they don't know that. But well, it's and, really important they do the act of giving yeah. is really what it's all about. It, it is. And it's, it's and when it's a deep family member it can be so challenging and in and fact so you say the relationship with family members change over the years as people some people evolve some people evolve. evolve and some people don't and some people see themselves back as a child with that yeah. with the family members like well, when you were a young child with me that's the relationship from that point of view and you yeah. might be the one that the, the family that has ex, ex, really expanded your awareness mm -hmm. And they might still be back in that childhood days. Well, and then exactly. Life. And then you go back to a family situation and it's funny how the dynamic works, you know, like I'm always this and my, one of my, you know, siblings is that and my other, you know, other sibling is that. And it's a nightmare.
<laughs> and how, how pissed off do they get when you change and they don't? They get pissed off. Well, I, they get pissed. Oh, right now I'm always the, uh, I'm, the, uh, I'm the bad they, guy right now. I'm the one with the ego, yeah. and I'm. Oh, the, that's right. You're that's right. right. You and I are always at the same place with that. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Always, uh, we have the same problem there. We have the same. We have the same people. family. Actually, yeah. it's unbelievable. <laughs> it, it's and they put this whole thing on us, like, and, and all of us have sure experienced this that they look at us for what they want to look at and where yeah. they place us. And you're like, yeah, I don't fit into that real realization. Of, that's not no. who I am. That's their projection of what they want or what they think. That's not who I am. How many families don't get to know? When you have a relationship or a holiday time, get together, you can look around that table and say, I cannot relate to that person, to that oh. person, to that person. <laughs> this is a family obligation, but I really don't feel they belong here. <laughs> right? Okay. That I'm is such a good that. thing that you just said. I think that's hysterical. I think everybody should be doing that, you know? It's so true. It's so oh true. God. I think it's so I like to go around the table and say, I don't belong with you, 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 right. you, because I don't know what world you guys are in, but I'm into the spiritual awareness of, you know, but oh. people are the, the levels that they're at, and you can't change them. Oh, my you God. And if we talk about dysfunctional families, Renee, would you put up that, that cartoon? <laughs> this, this was a great quote by Ram Das, and he said, Ram Das said, if you think you're enlightened, go spend a week with your family, which I love that one. I mean, your final test on the path to spiritual enlightenment, and then it's the family. I mean, it's so true. It's so true. Well, Trey and I've cut ties of all the toxic people in my life. Good for you, Trey. That means friends, coworkers, exactly. Former coworkers, even family have put up my boundaries. And if they don't respect it, then sorry, you're you're out. Ex Trey, exactly. Bravo, I, I, Trey. Because my friend Jordy, who you met, Kelly. Oh, I love Jordy. Spiritual friend, yeah. great person. And you should be, you know, James. We don't talk that often, but when we talk, we pick up from where we left off, and it's true. Those are true friends, and. uh she said, I was saying, oh, but all the friends that people, not friends, people in my life, I let go this year. And I said, and she's a great saying. And it's bye bye, kitty kitty. <laughs> and I said, I said, bye bye, kitty kitty, many times this year. For sure. Because you're growing and they're not. I'm like, yeah. Like, and the other thing is, you get, you grow weary after a while. You just don't carry. want to do it. I cannot carry. carry it anymore. I can't take the dysfunction any no. longer. I just can't. Even I have boundaries. <laughs> yeah, it's that. Really toxic. It's toxic, definitely. Oh, it's so true. I just, I just can't take it. I like um, Kathy. Kathy Conega said, "I went out and got adopted to a new family." <laughs> okay, that's hysterical and probably really great for you that you did that. Probably very. It's a positive thing. You know, yeah. I mean, families have this ability to push your buttons like nobody else's. Sure. And there's this wonderful therapist. Her name is Sherry Campbell, and she wrote a book called "But It's Your Family." Cutting Ties with Toxic Family Members and Loving Yourself in the Aftermath. And I love that. Her name is Sherry, S-H-E-R-R-I-E -E, Campbell, C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. -L. So, and she wrote this great book about this. And what she talks about, which I thought was really good. I mean, her tips, if you have to be around family during this time, she said, identify the patterns in a family. Okay. Oh, that's a great one. Sit down and that... identify the patterns. Even take your napkin and start writing on it. Right. I mean, you can just do that. I thought that was so great. I mean, we all know this one will do this. This one will do this. And I just think I love that one. She That's said right. self-care. So prioritize your mental health care first. And that's so accurate with these. <coughs> you know, you really have to. Um, and set boundaries. I mean, James and I have talked about boundaries and, you know, where you don't engage. And instead of even getting defensive, you might say something like, Oh, how about that golden bachelor? You believe he chose her? <laughs> you can change. You can set all kinds of things up. But um, and the other thing, you know, she says this, and I couldn't agree more. And Renee and I were just talking about this before the show, James. Plan and escape. Don't you think that's a good one? <laughs> Do I smell something cooking on the stove? I gotta go. It, exactly. <laughs> well, I have to use the restroom. I, I, I have to use the restroom. And how about this one? This is a really good. Let's say you're going to be around family. I think you love this tip. She said, get, "Have a job while you're there, so you're not just going to be bombarded. Like, right. oh, my job is to set the table. My that's job right. is to get water for everybody. My job is to, you know, go outside and do whatever. You know, play with the dog." Whatever it is. You know, Kelly, it's really funny. I don't know if you're going to remember this. You might, you might, we were at my 60th birthday party, but. Oh, of course I was. I naturally do this. And it's always been a thing. And Brian used to get me for it. But I used to enjoy people at my house and a party yeah. and everything. But I'd always find myself going away from them. So I'd, I'd engage and then I'd walk away and 
because I looked on time. And there were like 200 people in my house. And I'm like, oh, I remember yeah. that. Remember that? I think you came to me and said, we got to go hide. Let's go over yeah, here. I think I did. <laughs> I'm quite sure. Yeah. <laughs> that was really fun. Well, I mean, you know why, James? You know, you really, ultimately, you're more of an introvert. I am. I'm very shy. I and really am. People that are introverts, actually, and an introvert really does have to have a plan ahead of time before they go. So imagine you're an introvert or you're an HSP or you're an empath and you have dysfunctional family. That's a hard one. And that is a lot of us. You know, it's just yeah, a lot I, of it. I, I, Christmas people have me for Christmas. Nothing. Um, nothing. I've had a couple of dinners and, I, you know, it's okay. But it's like, you know, you just got to, I just step back and listen because right. people are going to well, be themselves. And you don't, it, that's another thing. It's okay. Everybody needs to know it's okay if they don't go. It's really okay. Right. Give your permission not to go. Exactly. Because that's a really big deal. I mean, again, set realistic expectations too. It's true. Another tip, which I thought this was a good one, deflect and diffuse because you cannot control toxic relatives or <laughs> you can't. So again, you know, really think of already what you're going to say. If you already know your aunt says this or your mother says this or your dad says this, already think. But James, probably my favorite one is this is this tip. Remain an adult. That's great. Is that a good one? That's Remain a an adult. And what I mean by that also is this. Do not over-consume alcohol. Do not. I, I know. know. I know. But you know what I mean? If you're in this situation, because when, once in my family dynamic. Well, it's an escape, isn't it? It's an escape. And yeah. then, but what can happen is things will really fly out of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be really careful because you, have, you have to you have to really strategize this. You know, like I I cannot tell you how how many parties, James, and, and I'm more introverted too, like you. I mean, and did I literally plan an escape route? Like certain people have would have their holiday parties. I'd be like, okay, you plan for the weekend, Kelly. That, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. The house is great. She goes, the house is on fire. Everybody, okay. get out of my house. <laughs> okay, that's a really funny one, and uh, I'll have to remember that when the house is on fire, you it's know. A little bit of drunk monkey says, I need to apply for medical marijuana. <laughs> okay, and sometimes that is, is very true, actually. You know, I mean, you never know, but um, you know, know yourself really well, know yourself and, and honor yourself. I mean, honor, honor yourself. yourself, honor you know, yourself. I, I tell my members, I said, Listen, you can't speak to me that way, and they're like, Oh, yeah, like, oh, no, no, no. You can speak to me that way. And remember that not only your family members or friends and some people that you're with in your life, people there to support you, support yeah. you in many ways. And if they don't support you and they take away from you, yeah. get rid of them. You don't need it. There are many people oh, yeah. that you, you, I call this aging myself. You can jive with. There you go. <laughs> How old is that? Together <laughs> with the whole world. And um, really let that, and those are the people that you want to be with. That's the people that pull you down. Okay, wait, crack, this is perfect. Crack. Wait, this is perfect. Gary La Lavaccia, he says the funniest thing I have ever heard. He goes, holiday parties with family members should be conducted via Zoom. Uh, and I thought that said zoo. <laughs> At the zoo. At the zoo. <laughs> okay, that's really, really funny. Um <laughs> Big TV screen in the living room or something. And it's like, right. oh, behaving. oh my gosh. So, but we also need to talk about families who there's great loss james great. You know, so we've got the family dynamics of of great loss <clears throat> now i'll say this when my mother died and my mother was mrs christmas and my mom was everything wow. christmas i mean hence i'm wearing red right now she was christmas queen and when she died that first the first without her i was out of my body i don't even remember being in my body it was just too yeah. painful to be in, my and i'm thinking of lynn Last week in April, Christmas was her biggest holiday. When they cleaned at her, my niece cleaned at her house. She had four rooms filled. We didn't realize she was a hoarder. Four rooms filled with Christmas items: tablecloths and wreaths and lights and Santas and snow. Four oh, rooms. Four wow. rooms. So this is gonna be really hard for them, the family, for them. Yeah. And um, I'm gonna be there supportive and just talk to them. I think sometimes you just you can speak to people and ask, you know, ask somebody how they're doing. So people sometimes like to hear that they have support. On the oh, there. I, you definitely have to do that. I mean, and um, 
David Kessler, who we have got to have on our show. I mean, if if did you, you see him in Chicago, did I what? Did you see him in Chicago? Did you see? No, him? was he in Chicago when I was, he was here? in Chicago? I didn't know. I thought he lived in LA. Oh, David lives in Chicago. David yeah. Kessler. I'm not David Kessler. I'm sorry, David Vigiano. Oh, David Vigiano. No, but I heard he he sent me a message. Okay. Yeah, David but Kessler is a wonderful grief therapist that I've known for yes. years. Written many books, and he's like Kelly, as you would say, the number one grief uh, specialist. Grief specialist. Yeah, grief.com, and he gave some really good tips. So if you are, you know, ready right now, and you have had loss, or in the holidays, so I work with so many of you that have had loss. I mean, it's some of the things he says, which I loved. He said, you know, if you're about to have a holiday dinner, he said, you know, say a prayer or light a candle. But this one I thought was sweet, James. He says, create an online tribute for them. Oh, I love that. Wasn't it? Right. And then share maybe a funny story or a love story or, you know, t but find somebody that will, you can talk to about your loved one. Because I think that's going to be really yeah. important. But he also says this. He says, if you get invited to, uh, to go out, you know, to a special holiday dinner, okay, and you've already had loss, he said, there, have two plans, plan A and plan B which I love this. He says, plan A is you go to that holiday dinner with family and friends. And if it doesn't feel right, you have plan B or you don't go. And plan B is the following. You stay home. Maybe you watch a movie that you both liked, or you, you know, maybe go to visit the uh, cemetery, or maybe you even cancel the holiday. He says it's okay to cancel a holiday if it's too much for you. I agree. Don't you agree with that? I totally agree with David. I mean, there's a whole other um, system that says, you know, that, you know, you should just go on with it. I don't believe that. Yeah, and, I really, and people grieve differently. Everyone grieves differently. Everybody grieves differently. The relationship is very different from parent to sister to partner. Totally. From animal. It's, it's all different. Um, I suggest, I, I wrote a, the book of Healing Grief about it. But, yes. And I also mentioned, um, I think it's always good to, a um, couple of things I was talking about. Maybe set up a time, a schedule to sit down and talk to them. Sit down and talk oh, to them. Oh, I love it. For the holiday. And you can set I up a time. A number, write them a Christmas card or a holiday card. I they, love that. They hear your thoughts. They hear yes. that. Um, also, I have mentioned this before. Set a place at the table for the a family gathering. Set a place. Um, put it when you're putting decorations out for the holidays. Put a photo of them and decorate it. I love that. And decorate the photo. Decorate. Oh, I love that. that. Decorate, think of how much I love you and what you've done for me in this life. And I hope I did this. Communicate with them as you're decorating. That's really oh, incredible. That's a I great idea. My family. I got some poinsettias and each one I put down, I thought of a family member and I said, thank you. And I, yeah, that's it really works well. Oh, really. that's a lovely. You know what I did when we were in Chicago, we went to this great restaurant and they had uh, oddest thing of all on the menu. They had pigs in a blanket. This was a very upscale restaurant. But my mother's favorite thing in the world was pigs in a blanket. Yeah. So, so that's, that's the, no no accident there, Kelly. No accident. No accident there. And, uh, and that but, goes for if people had a favorite, your know, loved one had a favorite recipe, make it for the holidays. Oh, that's a great one. Make a favorite favorite recipe. Oh, they, you know, they get every all of our nuances, our subtleties. They pick those up so quickly. That's their world. Their world is in black and white. Boom! It's it's the subtleties. And that they love those. They love your thoughts. They love the prayers. They love you lighting a candle next to their photo. The thing with them also, they love the acknowledgement and the love that you send. They just don't want you to get trapped in that because they've moved on. Not that you have to move on. Of course, everyone's grief is different, but they just want you know, they, they, they don't want you to stay in that space of, oh my God, the victim. If you were the victim uh, grief person, that that becomes a profession. I haven't seen it that much, but I have seen it, by the way. I have seen, I've seen it with children, uh, people with children, and also the partners. Because in some way, people give up their lives, and they give it all to the children or the partners, and they forget who they are. Yeah. And then when they're, they're gone, they don't know who they are. And there's that extra sense of grief. Oh, absolutely. And the, on the other flip side of that, people who've had loss, try to remember if there are children around to pay attention to the children, because the children would have suffer the loss too you exactly know? so it's really important because a lot of times children are ignored with that you know? it's so true kelly i mean yeah. you and i both have mess readings with people that but oh. you gotta pay attention to the ones that are living too and the ones that are living yeah. i always 
And I want everybody to be mindful of this. When somebody has lost a beloved pet, it's very deep. Please remember that because people will just, some people just like skim over that, you know? Yeah, if I could show Always pisses me off on that if, one. If I could show you a, a photo of my, my dog lying down underneath my she, chair. Oh. Um, but I, I, you know what I did for Maisie? I have a, um, a plaque in my garden and the photo is on it. And I put a decoration around the Christmas holidays. Okay, I, I love it. Do also, maybe in cemeteries, they do that for the yeah. you, But I do it for Pearl. Yeah, wow. Pearl, Maisie. Well, my dear friend Vicky did something really interesting that I'd never heard of. And maybe, James, you've heard of this. She, when her beloved husband died and her mother died, she put grave blankets. She does that. Grave blankets. And she's from the East Coast. Have my, you heard of grave my, blankets? Yes. My, we've done it. My sister and I have done it for my mother and father. It's, yeah, put blankets on. Yep, I've exactly. never heard of that before. I actually thought she meant like a real blanket. No, you it's know? actually green. It's like a, like a green, green grass. Of, of Yeah, it was really blanket. wild. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, we do it every year for my mom and dad. Well, well my sister I... does. My sister does. Um, very Catholic. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I said it's really nice, and it's a nice sentiment. They get the spirit world gets the sentiment, but yeah. you know, I don't feel I need to do that. You know, right? Oh, I, don't I, know. I don't believe in cemeteries necessarily either anymore. So I think that's <laughs> become a way of the past. I really do. Mm. I think that's going to go into the old world. Yeah. Joe Sunderlidge has a good thing. She says, sit at the kids' table for a whole new perspective. Make <laughs> art link letter asking the kids questions. Now, I love that idea. I it's think that's a great one. My favorite shows when I was a little, little. Me too. Yeah. Me too. That makes sense. And they should set a show like that now. Kids that say the darnest things. They should do that. Why don't they do a show like that? Oh, God. I'd love to put my grandkids in that. That would be hilarious. They're so funny. They say the funniest things. Yeah. Um, Little bitty drunk monkey 22 says, I was talking to my sister who passed and all the lights went on and off. Now let's talk about that, James. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that's how they come. And it's a little monkey. You would have some energy with you in you and around you that she can use to effect, make that manifestation. So um, my cousin was here with a friend uh, recently, the past two weeks, and her husband had passed. My The friend, his husband had passed over, who I knew, died of COVID. And it was late 60, 68. And I oh. love this guy, very down to earth, real guy, Virgo, Capricorn, rising, you're saying, like me, and uh, very down to earth. And uh, he came through so well. He came to a day before they even arrived and said, wow. James, you just take up the tree out there. It's falling down. And I was reminded when they came in, she said, Well, don't you remember you visited us on the, the farm or wherever there was? It? Yeah. And she goes, When you talked to Bob, you turned around and a tree fell down. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so they will use what's in your reference. Yeah. Library. Absolutely. Wait. And they will, you know, that's great when they manifest like that with lights or birds or some signs, acknowledge it and say, thank you. I appreciate that because they want to know they've gotten through to you. Oh, right on. You're absolutely. Yeah. I love this. Julie Munsterman. And I forgot about this, James. She says, I absolutely love playing my departed loved one's favorite Christmas songs. So yes. true. Silver Bells and the Chipmunks Christmas. It makes them feel so close to me. It's true. It's so, so true. true. I love that one. Um, I love that. And you might so, want to, you know, talk about setting a place for them at the table. And also you can combine too, put their photograph at, at a place at the table and decorate it and just talk to them. And man, it might seem weird. Who cares? It's just, right. really, you know, and they, you know, spirit loves to be acknowledged. And so often they feel like they become a figment of your imagination. You don't yeah. hear me. You don't see me. I keep on trying, trying to get through you, but you don't you see me or feel me or know I'm here and I'm right next to you. And they're, by the way, they're with you much more at the holiday season than not. Right? Kelly's Absolutely. I'm, and tell us why that is, James. Well, number one is that it's, it's they really have strong memories of the physical and they remember the um, heart moments, the moments that you will get together as just pure love. And the holidays, it's kind of oh. The gathering that they shared love, shared memories, mm -hmm. and they want to come back and be part of that. Still, they they haven't become a figure of your imagination. They're right there with you, so that's really why they come closer and closer at that time. Well, there's something so significant about the holidays too, about the creating memories. I mean, it's kind of like a, a global thing of you know the holidays. It's such a special thing. But you actually say in your email, you should make memories all year long. That's you so know? True. It's Which a, I, I love that statement, but I think the loved ones do remember that because of, you know, there's some deep well, They connection. come back with memories. And when they communicate with us, 
Many times they come back in memories. Do you remember this when you were a little And sometimes people don't remember, but they are holding on to a memory. They're sending me a memory of the time at the lake when you go to fishing with them. The other day, it was amazing. Friday night when I did the evening of spirit, a girl's mother came through and I said, she's talking about the rocks, collecting rocks. And they're going, oh my God, my mother used to insist they make rock, have rocks and create a rock garden. It was very real. It was a memory. And then right. yeah, the spirit made it real again for that recipient. That's what they do. And what they do. Yeah, I live, love that. Live in the love. That's the come back in that loving times, those, mess, those, those memories of love. That's the come back to. Yeah. I find Kelly, it's either that or regret. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Or regret. It's one of the two. One yeah. of the two. That's a true. Melissa Holloway says, I think because family trauma, because of family trauma, she said, I feel so much guilt to do a lot of things. And she said something that she's working through. And Melissa, I mean, I appreciate that. And guilt is a funny thing with this. I mean, work on your family, work on your trauma, honey, work on your trauma. And the guilt, let go of the guilt. Okay. Yeah. I mean, just the fact that you're, work, you're conscious of it is amazing. Let go of the guilt. Yeah. And, and another technique, which I want to share with everybody, which the just gave me. Oh, great. Okay, I have a little pad. I always have a pad here. And so they just showed me this. I'm not an artist, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> and I don't know why, but they said to draw a family tree. Okay, I love it. Write, write people's names on the benches, whether living and deceased. And right next to them, you know, draw something or, or give it a word to it or a description. And that's really nice. And I'd like to see, like, when you write someone down who's passed over, and you go back to that name, they might come to you with a quick thought about where they are now. So maybe it could be a tree of the present. Like, where are they now? And the living people, too. I wonder what, you know, what's the most, the most important in their foremost in their mind are the most important part of their life right now. What are they thinking about? The living people. And then as you do that, you can write one word down or just a couple things. And then when you have the deceased people, just write their name. And what, what is their one thought that they have right now? And your whole tree will be filled. It'll be a I love that. <laughs> I love that. Such yeah. a great idea. Different change of a family tree, right? Different angle. Yes. But it's current. Yes. It's a current time. I think it's a fantastic idea. You know, yeah. Truly. Marla says, James, I love your laugh. It always makes me smile. I know, doesn't it? Don't my laugh. A lot of people say, I love your laugh. I'm all over the world. They've said that to me. Yeah. And I just, I just laugh. Um, this is <laughs> Jan who says, my son, son, son 30 pounds of a heart attack of the day. Wow. I sang a song to him. That's fantastic. It was a song my dad, his grandpa, used to sing, and they probably came to get him. When I would finish the song, I could feel him hug me and smell me. It was so oh. Jan, it's so true. There's no death. You know, it's a slipping out of the skin. It's a slipping out of the skin. And, um, you know, at 39 years of age, that was definitely karmic, or 38. That was it a karmic. Uh, it had to be an obligation there. So bless you for allowing, for honoring that, that soulmate, that partner, to move on when... When he graduated this time, was at 38. You know, we got to always remember that souls come here to learn by experiences, not age, like physicality. People like to think of how old you are and when you pass. It's experiences for the soul to have. And sometimes souls come back and they have all their experiences by 20 years of age and they leave. Or, yeah. or it's a birth experience and they die. Or five years. Or it doesn't matter really. I know, it's, of course, for us humans, we want a connection. But for a soul, in perspective of a soul, it's all about experiences. So in some way, you know, you think 38, good for you for having that to learn and, and stay so long because this is not our natural world. This is a hard, hard place. Right. So It is, all. James. And Donna Joe says, James, my brother drowned, and I can't help wonder, is he where he is? What was he thinking? Is he lost? No, Donna Joe, oh, no. he's not lost. Not lost. Get no. that out of your head. Yeah. I don't really watch that. But, you know, that's one thing, too, I want to talk about, that, that spirits often say, stop thinking of me that way. And it's kind of a little, I'm going to say disrespectful, because we hold that image, and that, and many times it's a shock, and it's like, we stay yes. there. But they've moved on, and we need to move on as far as they, there's no death, and they've evolved. They're not in that dead space. Not well, the you know, James, it's so funny, because when I'll do readings, sometimes the soul doesn't tell me how they passed. Oh, many times, it, I don't know. It's not important to them. It's not important. The death condition is not important. Yeah. Sometimes it is as far as what I've found with transition, 
if you know they, they haven't you know they had a rough passing or whatever and i'm saying an illness caused that sometimes i'll bring that up but not much certainly not much you know yeah. and, and remember this whenever they come through there's always a reason behind the message they don't just throw things in our minds the hell of it it's nothing like that every word every sentence there's a reason behind why they're saying that and the guides on the other side assist them in creating the most important thought that the recipient has to hear, that the spirit has to give out. And so nothing is done arbitrarily. There's a reason behind every word and every sentence. I just know that to be true. Absolutely. Yeah. Selena Sparks says, do you feel the same way with suicide? What are your, what are your thoughts? Well, on you know, again, it, we, you know, we've talked about this a lot. It depends on what the circumstances are with Correct. this. I mean, if the person is very, very ill, if the person is mentally ill, if the person has had so much trauma, it, it all depends on, you know, the circumstances. I mean, if you have a wonderful life and you just decide for no reason to do that, I think that'd be an issue. And we put so much emphasis on suicides in society. Yeah. OMG. I, and I went, I was talking to heaven back in 96 and I wrote a chapter on suicide. And if I wrote that book again, it would completely change. My, my feelings about suicide would change. I have a whole thing about hell in there. I'm like, oh my God, that was a okay. cat still there. No more, no, no more would I say that. A souls come in for experiences. Now, suicides, as Kelly said, there's all different types of suicides. And one of them might be just a possibility that when souls were planning this lifetime, the one soul said, you know what? We all have to feel what it's like to have a suicide in the family. I'm going to sacrifice myself to do that. So we all have an, ex you know, you guys can grow and I can grow really well. Yeah. You know, so there is some growth there. The all different types of suicides, you know, like Kelly said. And, you know, sometimes the soul puts on, on their plate or their class curriculum more than they can handle. Absolutely. That yeah. always, always uh, gets to me when I when I know that a soul has brought so much on. And so, know, you know, you're a deja vu of two years ago, Kelly. I mean, it's such a deja vu speaking to you right now. It's like, oh. <laughs> and it, wow. And it was that, that certain souls, you know, they, they, they have a destiny and there's a connection karmically with the soulmates. And, you know, it, it, we got to understand there is no death. And it's, it's, it's a, I don't know, it's hard to say. It's a class. It's things move and shift every moment. And uh, love is the most important thing. They're never harmed with suicide. People think, oh, they're harmed. They're not going to meet us or they're stuck. Doesn't happen. And many times people that are in that, I don't say commit as a complete suicide, are in a space where, um, and I've been many suicides in my family and my friends' ha families. Um, it's it's just a way. It's it's a release, and and sometimes it's a good thing. And sometimes it's like you know you can't cut school. You can't cut school. No, you know you really can't. It's a great way to to say it. Yeah. Just you have to have experiences, and they're hard experiences, mm -hmm. and we get a lot from those hard experiences. But you know, it, it, no one is. It, many people that are, I was going to say many people that are completed suicides are met not only by families, but other people who have completed suicide will come to greet them. Yes. Because they know the mindset that that mm -hmm. soul is in at that moment. And if you're having this experience during the holidays, because often what happens is during the holidays, people, the suicide rate goes up. That's so correct. You, you really, you know, 988 is the number to call in the event that somebody is thinking about this. 988. But the reason I mention that is because during the holidays, if you can send that soul extra, extra love and forgiveness and all of that, it really means so much to the souls, doesn't it, James? So much. It really, 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 really does. It's very, very important. Oh, this is a great question. Renee Hounsold says, I was Hi. just looking at that. Oh, my gosh. She said, I've had many friends express their concerns of how to handle festivities with loved ones that are terminally ill or in hospice during the holidays. It's a big one. Okay. Well, let's start with this one. Um, you know, lower, very little expectations, a lot yeah. of love, a lot of be present in the moment. And, uh, and what I, what I've done in the past when I've had my father mm -hmm. was in the holidays. Yeah, the, mine too. And I would just say, um, I would just talk about, talk about the holidays, talk about how they meant in their lives, how great they yes. are. What, you know, you don't say how you left this earth, the great things you did, but how great, you know, you're such a good person. You did this for me. My, I never realized how wonderful you were. You know, we had this experience and bring back positive memories to them because it'll make them feel better. And it's true. And it's acknowledgement that, you know, you need, they need, 
And it really yes. seems that the energetic of space. Really and maybe seems. this is the time for that. You know, it, it's yeah. holidays don't have to be, oh, we're going to a festive party. This right. is a deep part of the world. This is a deep part of your soul. My goodness. What and a maybe time. If, if they're able to eat something, maybe bring some, you know, um, I don't know, some holiday treats, a fruit, not fruit pie, fruit some pie. eggnog. Some eggnog or something, <laughs> cookies or, you know, fresh baked. Say, I baked these fresh cookies for you. Yeah. They Maybe even that. just the smell, if they can smell, you know. Yeah. I mean, um, really, even scent, remember, scent, a really important smell is very important. Um, words, they hear you so you can speak to them in their ears. Uh, the last thing goes, the hearing, they hear you. Um, just, you know, it's important to not act like everything's okay, but, but be in a space that it's okay because they're okay. They really are. That's they really cool. are. Carol Ann MD, Carol Ann Ling MD says, can a normal person, James, who has crossed over, become a spiritual guide or intervene with spirit? I don't know any normal people. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think you're I think she means if somebody didn't have any, you know, spiritual anything, you know, and they pass, can they become a spiritual guide? Yes, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. And, and many times the family members or friends who pass over, you wouldn't expect it. Number one, they feel like they may have done enough for you in the lifetime. And they want to come back that way or they feel like they want to help you in a certain area of your life and they will help to impress you with that then they think well i'm good at that i can help them with that and sometimes it's a thank you it's it's help it's thanking you and helping you because they feel you meant so much to them in their lifetime that they want to repay that in some way yeah that's so true and they might be an expert in something they didn't have any idea here in the physical world that they were an expert at something. They had an aspect of themselves they didn't uncover when they were in the physical. But now in the spiritual world, like my sister, now in the spiritual world, they're more aware of their certain aspects. And my sister said to me, I'm one of your guides now because I can help you go to different worlds. Like, okay. Wow. Yeah, but she couldn't do that here on the earth. She was limited to that. It'll be fun to see, though, Lynn's behavior. Or He's already so, changed. Oh I was going to say, I, mean, I think it's going to be really fun for you, though, at Christmas time, since she loved Christmas. All of a sudden, you will start seeing things and getting yeah. messages from her. Yep. Yeah, and which uh, is fun. I just got one from my, I got it right now. She said about the reindeer collection. Okay, reindeer. Reindeer, oh, did she collect reindeer? She just said, I put that in the window. I used to put it in the window at Christmas time. So tell my daughter. I said, okay. <laughs> Don't you love when they do that? It's so easy. It's so easy if you don't try. I mean, mm -hmm. if you have belief and a trust, the spirit, it's just a space above us and they impress. And um yeah. that's just be open and surrender to it. Don't try to control it. Never I love this. Cheryl Gray says, James, hello, friend. I, I feel that Cheryl. when loved ones linger on in hospice, etc., it's the soul's way of allowing their loved ones closure and the opportunity to say goodbye and how much they were loved. It's a gift to us, so treasure it during the holidays. Right on, Cheryl. Yeah, very true. Very, very true. I agree. And Kim Ann Sodras, James says, your sister still hate birds. <laughs> Good one. I, I haven't talked to her about that, but I'm sure she has a different awareness about birds. But yeah. Did she not like birds? I forgot. She hated birds. She hated birds. And she um, hate birds? So from, just, maybe from the bird movie? I think from a past life is really what I think it oh. went from. A little child, she was always like that. And I brought her once to Disneyland and we went to the tiki room. And um, she said, Are you promising me there's no no real birds? Not like birds, Lynn. No, it's all automatronic and robotic birds. Right. That, uh, and so he goes, Are you sure? And she said, like, Are you sure? Are you sure? Because I want to know what real birds. I said, Lynn, it's just it's not. We got there at seven o'clock in the morning when they first opened because we went the day before and it was we couldn't even get in Disney. So we went the next day and with we were the first ones in the tiki room. And myself and her girlfriend and a couple other people there. And we're sitting there. And the toucan comes down to the ceiling. Just welcome, everybody. Right. And as that comes down, real birds are flying out of the place. And my sister went, ah! and she ran to the exit. And they were just, you come out now, real birds. God, okay. God, That's God. hysterical. Oh, my God. Sorry, Lynn. <laughs> Sorry, Lynn. <laughs> I just heard her say, you cracked me up. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, and Adeline Mersh said, my grandmother was terrified of birds, too. It's a thing. And some people are afraid of butterflies. You ever heard that one? Well, wait a minute. I had a, I had a client that was afraid of them. And it turned out because she was, she yeah, there was a whole trauma behind something where she saw a butterfly and the trauma hit it's at the so same terrible. time. It's just with it, yeah. I actually had a, also another client that was had a huge terror of cats. Did you, Kelly? Cats, 
Like if she saw a cat crossing the street, she would actually go into a panic attack. Really? So that, how do you live in a world where you can't see a cat? Oh, there are people that are afraid of cats and dogs, and yeah, yeah. And dogs, I've seen it. Cats. I don't know. Gail Jean says, "I hate hippos." Past life. <laughs> I love ah, well, I love them. you know, we all have those things. I, I don't hate horses, but I'm living in a place. There are all horses here, and they're all like that's true. Right down the street, there are some stalls for horses, and I right. respect them. But I know several lifetimes I was trampled. No doubt about it. By a horse, you think? Oh, by horses. Whether it's war in Roman times or other. They have to be trampled in several lifetimes with horses. That and drowning. So definitely yeah, I have the drowning one too. Common ways of Diana yeah. being hung, you know, hung. hung yeah, yeah. yeah. Hurt, you know. Yeah, have that too. <laughs> oh, I had another one thrown off a mountain. I had that one sacrificed. I had that, and I've also another one I've had was being. Um, this was a not great one, but it was like a real one. <laughs> being st- not stoned to death, but lying there, and they put stones on you, and they. This is how they, and I'm like, oh my god. Okay. This so is during the Middle Ages. I know this is during the Middle Ages. And you've heard they put stones to crush. Yes. Crush. Yeah. I had it's, that experience. Wait, so no <laughs> stone massage for you then. <laughs> well, I, I think I've healed that. I put it in perspective because I could get a stone massage. Wait, so, and I crack rocks. So, wait, wait, like, so this lifetime should be positively easy. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I collect rocks. And I make pathways of rocks. That's true. I, you do. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so waterboarded when I was a witch, Chris Hart says. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, right. I do not like my head in the water. Yep, yep. It's true, you know. Oh, Cindy Sue says I'm deathly afraid of grasshoppers. Oh, I love grasshoppers. Well, well maybe that's maybe that goes back to um, the locust yeah. the locust attack. Oh yeah, absolutely. Could go back to any of those. China or South America, or you know, when, I think that's where that directly comes from. Yeah. Wow. Carolyn says cats are pro- ah, protectors versus dark portals on dogs. Can sense departed souls. Oh, do, definitely, yeah. Wow. And my girl underneath me here is so connected with. Is me she? And protected of the property. When someone walks down the street, she starts barking. They oh, have yeah. to pass her test, and she is a ferocious bark. You know. Oh, I I've got two here that are very yeah. ferocious. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which I love, but it's a lot. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna oh, I, I'm gonna bring Pearl too. I just signed up today. Um, there's a place here in California, it's like California, where you bring dogs to learn herding, and you sit, in the, you stand in the middle of the sheep, a whole bunch yes, of sheep. Yes, yeah. And they let her out, and she's got to get to you and herd the sheep. So okay, you're gonna dogs. love that. There's a lot of mud involved, and it's really fun. Ah, we have two herders. We had a herder. This is our third herder. Um, we love them. So it's yeah. fun to watch them do that, James. It's amazing. I'll take photos, for everybody. Yeah. Oh, that <laughs> would be so great. That would be great. So do you, what do you have coming up, James? Are you, is your class, are they still on sale or? I was telling my birthday, my baby girl, but she's right here. I can't push the camera. Oh. Out. Um, I, I, right now we're having um, regular sales going on. Nothing is pushed out, but you know, everything's available for people. It's, it's a great idea. I thought for gifting courses to people. Oh, it's such a great idea for that. You can gift courses. Yeah. You can give them. A, a, well, so you know, when people don't know what to here give you somebody. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Eight days transformation. Great course. Seven day energy cleanse, great low price. Yeah, well, talk about the seven seven day energy cleanse because somebody well, wrote that they had taken it and they loved it. It's the change of people's lives. It's number one, become aware of your, yourself as an energy being, not a physical being. So there are some exercises tuning into who you are as an energetic being, feeling energy, sensing energy, sensing your own. And then it goes into feeling the fields around you, the orc fields, the atmosphere around you, right? And becoming aware, it's almost like, the, um, what's that, Kelly, with a beep? Beep, the the and the, the submarines they watch the yeah the, yeah yeah it's like becoming aware of the field around you and then becoming so aware that you become aware when someone else's energy is in this space and whose energy it is and it might be just a thought from someone and you're able to detect when that energy comes into that space of yours and see whose energy is what it emotionally feels like and what you're going to do with it so and then you're because of that you become your mind is in a space where it opens and becomes aware of energy in all the different ways. So in that mindset, you meet people in the living, the bodies, when you walk to a room and you sense their energy first. And that's how it works. And it's an ongoing thing. You never shut down, you progress. So it's really an energetic exercise and cleansing out the old stuff from your childhood, from your adulthood. And this is such a perfect time to be doing that. Perfect time to cleanse, letting go. I I just went, like I said earlier, went through all my emails. I'm down to 100. And that's so lucky. And filing. At the end of the year, it's a good time to let go of the past. Let go of 
And especially because, you know, next week we're going to be doing a show on predictions. And I'll just say this, January 1st, Jupiter goes direct. Mm -hmm. And it's been retrograde for months. And Jupiter is the largest planet. And when it moves, James, we're going to feel better. Yeah, Everybody's going to feel better. Kind of luck and, and fortune. And good fortune. And yeah. yes, and spirituality. Yeah. And it's, it's so large, it helps us feel better. So yeah. that's a really good thing. And so to let go of all of your stuff right now, if you could do a cleanse, it's so, so great for you. I, oh my gosh. Got, again, Janet's mentioning about animals, her animal. Um, you know, animals, of course, are around the holidays as well. So oh. set a place for them, uh, an yes. extra dish there for them, and talk to them. Um, I, I do and it. And sometimes <laughs> it's better just to be home with your cat or your dog and yeah. then go out. I mean, really? Yeah. Well, I've found that in the past 10, 15 years. I've only been here with Matt. I know. I know. <laughs> it's so true. Um, <laughs> watch a good movie. Watch YouTube. There you go. Watch a good movie. That is so true. Oh, my gosh. We watched your family. Really. We watched Family Switch the other day on Netflix where a family gets hit by an astrologist. Which I can't crack me up. This astrologist. What does that mean? <laughs> it just means that somehow the planets were aligned, and then the families all switch, and the the parents become the teenagers, and it was very funny. Ed Helms is hysterical in it. It was very funny. Wow. <laughs> it was on Netflix. I enjoyed that one. Wow. Oh my <laughs> God. Wonderful. Yeah, the show is always pretty trippy. It's pretty great. Yes, our prediction show. Yeah, oh, it's oh, yeah. it'll be something. I mean, we're, record, I gotta say. It, and some of the things that you come up with, James, where you just start, you know, going, it's unbelievable. You'll tell me and say, you know, you said that. Like, really? You just said that. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You'll say that a lot. You said that. I like, really? I don't remember that. The one about my book was pretty trippy. The one from 2020. It was talking to heaven. I happened to be looking at the book. And as I opened up the page to suicide, actually, James, it was a chapter on suicide. And you said, what if you, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but you actually wrote, what if in the year 2020 and there's an illness going around and I was stunned and I actually took a picture of it and sent it to you and said, do you know what you wrote? And you wrote that in 1997. Yeah. I don't remember. It just comes in and goes oh out. Oh my gosh. Just, you know. It well, is. Wow. Thank you, Kelly. Oh, thank you, James. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for joining us today on Both Sides Now and Beyond. Your hosts, James Van Prague and Kelly White, are dedicated to bridging the earthly therapeutic world and the world beyond, aiming to guide you on a path of self-discovery and spiritual enlightenment. Every Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, you can tune in live on YouTube and Facebook. Or, if you miss the live show, you can always find the latest episodes right here on your favorite podcast app. Remember... This journey of exploration and understanding continues weekly, and we're honored to be part of it with you. We encourage you to subscribe to our podcast if you haven't done so already, ensuring you never miss an episode of our foray into the unseen realms of the many lessons they hold for us. Until next time, stay open-minded, remain curious, and remember, life and its myriad experiences extend beyond the physical plane. See you next time on Both Sides Now and Beyond.